Hi, uh, my name is Tiao Hing Ye. I'm the CEO of SecureH Technology. Uh, let me first start by telling you a little bit about our company and how we started. We are basically a bunch of people that started from a national research lab. We have been doing all kinds of basic research for many years and in 1996, we decided to go into the field of information security and since then, we have been doing all kinds of research as well as application for the commercial world. And in 2003, we decided to start a company, SecureH Technology, to really focus on creating commercial products for the commercial world. Okay, so what we have done is that we take a whole bunch of security technology and put them together and create a security platform that we call SecureH Software. And on top of this platform, we create individual application, security application on top of it, which sort of uh, specify a particular security domain okay, for the user. And uh, this is how the security software was created. Now I'm going to tell you about SecureH Secure Data. It is a data protection solution offered by our company, SecureH Technology. What does it do? It protects the user data. So it does a lot of uh, data encryption. So, um, well, when it comes to encryption, a lot of people say, hey, you know, I hear about some uh, data encryption solution before, uh, things like full disk encryption. Well, the well-known uh, full disk encryption is called TrueCrypt, which is open source. You have other Microsoft solutions called BitLocker and various other commercial companies that is doing the same thing. I also have something called file and folder encryption. So things like Microsoft EFS and various other solutions uh, belong to that category. So you might say that, okay, I already have encryption, so what's so special about secure data? And uh, so let me first explain why this kind of solution in the past is not really good enough. They are pretty good uh, if you uh, use it for the purpose that in case you lost your notebook in the airport or in the cab, uh, people will not be able to access your encrypted data. But uh, if you are really using the machine, be it in the office or somewhere else, outside in the coffee uh, Starbucks or something like that, where, 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 where other people potentially can walk by your machine, copy out the data in the thumb drive, or they can access your drive over the same network, they can actually copy out your data or in plain you have no protection. So, um, so we thought that that wasn't a very good idea because most of this solution, what they do is they create a container. They encrypt the container. So when your data is in there, you are protected. But when the data move out, you are no longer protected. So in the case of secure data, what we do is it, we protect not the container, but we protect the data itself. So data at the file level. So all the data are fully encrypted, all right? Be it your normal documents, or the temp file that it creates, or even, even the system page file will get encrypted in secure data. It behaves the same way as like full disk encryption and so on, in the sense that they are all transparent, meaning that it's on the fly encryption decryption. So as you read the file to the user, it's as if it's transparent. They can edit the file, they can save the file, but everything stays as encrypted when they store on the disk. The difference between secure data and the rest is that it has something called we call 3P. 3P technology, which is basically uh, three words that start with P. The first one is called proactive. The second one is called pervasive. And the third one is persistence. So proactive basically says that uh, the system, when configured with whatever policy, will automatically encrypt all the data based on the policy in the system. So the default policy is to encrypt everything. As I mentioned earlier, all your data, all your temp file, the system page file, and so on. And the user doesn't get involved at all. So the user doesn't need to know whether their data is protected or not because they get protected all the time, automatically. And the system will just simply go ahead and protect all your data without the user making conscious decision or making conscious knowing that my data over here is protected, there is not protected. In this case, everything is protected. In this approach, it basically says that all your different file systems, regardless of whether your local hard disk, your thumb drive, your CD, DVD, your network drives, anything that the file can travel to within the enterprise network will always get encrypted by default. And therefore, it doesn't have anything that you accidentally lost or someone took it and you can leak out your data. The last one, persistent, basically say that not only are the data encrypted while at rest, they are also being encrypted on the move. So if you copy a data file from your machines to a file server, it stays encrypted throughout the whole journey and it stays encrypted when it's stored on the file server. Similarly, if someone else reads your data via a mounted drive on your machine, 
the data stay encrypted all the way until you reach their machine. If they don't have a key, they can't open your file. So with this three unique 3P technology, what it means is that you can use it on your normal endpoint, be it your laptop, be it your desktop, and you don't have to worry about, you know, that the user make a mistake. Uh, uh, we try to move, remove the, the weakest link, which is normally known as the user, from the equation that you don't now have to educate the user so much that they need to protect this and protect that because everything gets protected automatically. And you also make sure that people who are in the vicinity who can plug in a thumb drive or sniff the network will not be able to get your data. Encryption is great. It protects your data. It doesn't really protect you against uh, malware. So malware that is getting into your system can also read your data. So that's when we decided to extend secure data with two other technology. The first one is called application whitelisting and the second one is called application binding. Application whitelisting is a, uh, a, a relatively well-known technology now, especially after all the advanced uh, malware that are appearing over the last few years. Uh, you essentially say that instead of like antivirus that say, these are all the bad guys that cannot run, the good guys, the rest can run. Application whitelisting basically say that these are the trusted good guys they can run in my system. Anything that I don't know, including all the malware, will not be able to run in my system. So I just need to concentrate on what are the good guys. And that's it. Anyone who plant a new malware into my system, be it known or unknown, will not be able to run. There are a few things, especially those very stealthy kind of malware, it's difficult to protect against. So let me list now those things that application whitelisting are not good at catching. The first one is called rootkit. The second one, we call it anti-malware disabler. And the third one, we call it zero-day attack. So rootkit is basically those malware that stay so low level that all the anti-malware, be your antivirus or application whitelisting, cannot see them. Therefore, cannot block them. The anti-malware disabler basically are those malware that first, when they first came in, they disable all the anti-malware engine. So when the user reboot or whatever later, you're wide open, they can inject any malware into your system without being stopped. Zero day attack are, is a big category and I'll talk about it later in more details. So what does secure data do? Secure data essentially create a layer in the entire system that take the 3P encryption plus add whitelisting plus add, con add binding into one single layer. We call it integrated defense. All right, with this integrated defense, what does it give you? Let, let's take a look of first the rootkit. Rootkit, this is an operating system. This is like a stack of operating system. Rootkit stay very low level. It's so low level that no one else can see them and they can freely roam the entire system and read all your data files. But by virtue that we have this layer here, what happened is that rootkit can only read encrypted files because it doesn't pass through our encryption engine. If it doesn't pass through our encryption engine, the data they read from the hard drive are all encrypted. If they want to read the plain file, they have to go on top of us, pass through our engine so that we, our engine will decrypt for them. But if you are on top of us, our application whitelisting will see you and therefore they will block you if you are not a trusted application. So we effectively stop rootkit from accessing my sensitive data. So we solve this problem. How about anti-malware disabler? People who disable my engine. They can come in and disable my application whitelisting engine. And at the same time, the encryption engine will fail. When the encryption engine will fail, what happens is that you can introduce any malware you want later. All the files stay as encrypted because no one is decrypting the files for anyone else. So again, the anti-malware disabler will not be able to get at my sensitive data that I don't want anyone else to see. How about zero-day attack? Zero-day attack include all kinds of attack. Some of it is just simply some malware. If you run, it can compromise your system. But malware will not be able to run with application whitelisting. The only kind of zero-day attack that can still get in is those that actually attack the trusted application. So you have a, a trusted application like Adobe program. You load a file in there, and suddenly they hijack the whole process, and the whole process becomes malware. Ah, suddenly a trusted application can now become a malware and wanting to read your data. And that's where application binding come in. Application binding basically give you the ability to bind specific application to specific documents. So for instance, I can say that Microsoft Word file.doc.docx file can only be read by Microsoft Word 
in that case, if I hijack another trusted application like Adobe, I will not be able to touch the Microsoft Word file. So my Microsoft Word file, Excel file, PowerPoint file can stay safe, even though another application has been hijacked. We also can prevent application that tends to be attacked by attackers, malware attackers, especially things like explore, your, your Internet Explorer, your web browser. So for those cases, the application binding can create something called a sandbox in which it says that this particular application can only read and write to a specific directory in your system. Okay, maybe something like C colon IE slash star. So IE can only read everything within this directory and write any malware, if you get any malware and write, only appear in this directory. So your whole system is still safe, except this directory. So you should go in and clean this once in a while. If you want to upload uh, documents to the internet, you have to move the document inside this so that the IE can read it but all the other documents in your system will not be accessible by your Internet Explorer and therefore you are safe. Okay, so this is a sandbox idea. So together with 3P, application whitelisting and application binding, we have created a solution that effectively protect your data. We remove the weakest link, which is called the end user, from the equation so that data always get encrypted, protected. At the same time, we also protect you against malware including the very advanced type of malware where other solutions today cannot solve. They cannot solve rootkit problem. They cannot solve problem when the, -mal the malware come in and disable you. We can completely. And for zero-day attack, we have the solutions to ensure that you can mitigate the risk to the maximum possible extent. Okay, and that's where the application binding come in. So that is the secure data, 3P plus application whitelisting and application binding solution.